I'd like to introduce you to an excellent tool. It's a program called MallView. And this is a um, modeling and visualization software for molecules that you can load in your web browser, any modern browser that supports JavaScript and WebGL. And so just go to mallview.org. And among the things that MallView does, it lets you draw a two-dimensional Lewis structure and then it will give you a three-dimensional model of the molecule that you can manipulate and do some interesting things with. Now, of course, the first thing we need, we need that Lewis structure. So before we start using MallView, let's get a few Lewis structures that we can dump into it. We'll start with nitrite. So nitrite, we have five electrons from this nitrogen, six from each of the oxygens, plus an extra one from that minus one charge for a total of 18 electrons. Now, if we're gonna draw it, we can go ahead and stick nitrogen in the center because it's the most electropositive. And we'll use a total of four electrons to make these two bonds here. Now we will try to give octets to the exterior atoms. That's gonna use up another 12 electrons so, so far we've used up 16. We have two left over that we can stick on the nitrogen. Fortunately, nitrogen still doesn't have an octet. It only has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons by the Lewis counting method. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert some of these electrons we've given exclusively to the oxygen into shared bonding electrons. That way oxygen still gets the use of them, but nitrogen will too. All right, so now everyone has an octet. We have a good Lewis structure. We can check by assigning formal charges. And the formal charges are gonna be important because we actually need them to input this molecule into mall view. Because it needs to know how many electrons there are in order to simulate their orbitals correctly. So it is oxygen. Oxygen normally gets six electrons. And by the formal charge counting method, we've given it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it has a formal charge of minus one. This nitrogen is in group five, normally has five electrons. We give it one, two, three, four, five. So that has a formal charge of zero. And then finally, this oxygen over here, again, it's in group six. We give it one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. So it has a formal charge of zero. And this is a good structure because the total charge adds up to the charge in our molecule, negative one. And we have close to zero charges where possible. We're stuck with a minus one charge and we've put it on the most electronegative of the atoms here. Now sulfur trioxide has 24 electrons and I'll just show you the result that you get. We get these three oxygens around the sulfur with double bonds between everything. And if we consider instead uh, this ion here, SO3 two minus, we have an extra two electrons. And in this case, we get a structure where we have potentially a minus one charge on two of the oxygens. So this is gonna, again, be fairly important when we put this into mall view, because it needs to know about this extra pair of electrons, for example, on the sulfur, which it will only know if we include the correct charges. All right, so let's go ahead and go to mallview.org. Can click through this opening screen here. You see it comes preloaded with a, a molecule. Now the way that you draw in mall view is you select an element over here in the right hand panel and you can click one of the elements that exists and drag out the element. If you need an exotic element you can go over here to the periodic table and then you have the option of double bonds and triple bonds. There's an eraser right here if you want to remove something. You have charges 
over here. And then if you want to clear the entire screen, you can click this trash can. So let's go ahead and look at some of our Lewis structures. One thing we had was nitrite. So we had nitrogen with two oxygens attached to it. And we can go to 2D to 3D over here. And that will cause nitrite to pop up in the renderer. You can use your mouse wheel, scroll in or out. And then you can rotate it around with your cursor. Uh, note that Malview also works on smartphones. And so you can go, if it doesn't recognize it, you can go over here to Malview and say you want a touch interface instead. Now there's clearly a problem here, right? We, we have three extra atoms in our structure. So where did those come from? Where they came from was that we actually gave Malview an incorrect picture of the molecule over here. So what it does is whenever we're missing electrons, it will automatically throw in hydrogen atoms to make up the deficiency. This is actually a useful feature. If we had something like hexane, which has six carbon atoms. And these are all saturated with hydrogens, but instead of having to draw in all these hydrogens, we can just rely on Malview to know that they should be there. So let's try and get the correct nitrite structure then. So what's missing here is we had a double bond between the nitrogen and the oxygen. And then we needed a negative charge on this other oxygen. So now if we click 2D to 3D, we get the correct three-dimensional structure. Now let's look at our sulfur trioxide. We have sulfur with three oxygens attached to it, and they're all double bonded together. And if you want to clean up this structure here, you can click this broom over here. And it will make sure everything's nicely spaced and it was all zoomed together. Now we can click 2D to 3D, get our sulfur trioxide. It's trigonal planar. And how about our sulfite? So that had single bonds between the sulfur and the oxygen. And we had negative charges on these oxygens. Now the difference with sulfite was we wound up having a lone pair of electrons on the sulfur. And we don't need to put those electrons in ourselves. As long as we have the correct charges and the correct bonds, then Malview is going to know that they're there. And so now if we click 2D to 3D, we get a different structure that represents the presence of that lone pair of electrons. Now once you have the structure, Malview has some useful tools available. Go over here to JMOL. One thing that you can do is you can measure the distance between atoms. So you click distance and then select any two atoms. So it tells us we have a distance of 0.165 nanometers between this oxygen and this sulfur over here. Let's see if the distance is any different for that double bond. Yep, it's just a, a little bit shorter, 0.157 nanometers. You can also calculate angles. So then you just have to select the three atoms that you're interested in. Angle of 97.8 degrees here. Now let's look at something that has a high electronegativity distance, like uh, hydrofluoric acid. Now we can go over to JMOL. Um, let's, let's go ahead and do the 3D rendering first. Now we can go over to JMOL and we can ask it to do a charge mapping. We have the options of a translucent mapping where you can see the interior atoms or an opaque mapping where you just see the color grid. And so here what it does with the charge mapping 
it's basically taking an H plus and probing all the different regions of this molecule. And it says that H plus is much more repelled when it comes over to the hydrogen than when it comes over to the fluorine, which it's actually attracted to. So that's what these differences in color indicate. We can also ask to calculate charges directly on these atoms. We can get the bond dipoles and even the overall dipole of the molecule. Note that small view uses the convention of pointing from positive to negative. So this arrow is pointing towards the, the fluorine instead of the hydrogen. You can also look up molecules, go over to the search bar. Let's look up morphine. Uh, let's go ahead and do the charge mapping on morphine. So you can see where these oxygens and this nitrogen are. We, we have very electronegative regions. And so those might be places, for example, where if we had a positive cation, it might like to come and stick to this molecule. Molecule lets you look up um, actually very large molecules such as proteins. So we can look up hemoglobin, for instance. Now proteins, they're so large, they have kind of a, a special 3D notation for representing all those atoms in the, the molecule. So we have these bands and ribbons to, to represent regions of the, the hemoglobin molecule. Molecule connects to some databases so we could look up information about this um, still on the, the morphine that we looked up earlier. So it tells us um, lots of information that it's able to find in the database about it. It has some um, spectroscopic information. We can get our mass spect graph for morphine. And in general, there are just you know, lots of cool tools that are available in MallView. So it's, it's very handy for getting these 3D pictures without a modeling kit uh, so that you can visualize where the dipole should be and, and how the structure of the molecule influences its behavior.